Good evening and Happy welcome to the Bangalore International Center. Well, today's program we are celebrating Karnataka's maiden Ranji triumph and it is our deepest honor to have E.S. Prasanna in here with us today. Thank you so much for being here, sir. As someone who grew up in Mumbai and comes from a bygone era, I suppose, where Ranji Trophy matches were fun to watch and people would go there, and has adopted Bangalore as his home, I have mixed feelings, as you can imagine, about this, about this session. But I suppose, you know, being an RCB fan, you get used to mixed feelings anyway. But we are super excited to celebrate this seminal event. It's one of those things which I suppose if you are a Karnataka Ranji Trophy fan, it, it stays with you forever. It's something that changed Karnataka cricket forever. And we're so happy that we can have this small event in our own small way to acknowledge their great contribution. Without further ado, I asked Ram to please come up on stage and start off the event. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vikram. <coughs> Thank you all for coming here. <coughs> Before I invite the panelists on stage, I'd like to briefly introduce the event. Uh, and not the event today, but the event we are commemorating. And I'll have to give you some historical background, particularly for the younger people in this audience. Uh, <coughs> I was born in 1958. When I came into this world in April 1958, Bombay were the holders of uh, the Ranji Trophy. 16, I was born in a town called Dehradun, which is now in Uttarakhand. 16 years later, I happened to be spending six month holiday between school and college in Bangalore. And Bombay was still the holders of the Ranji Trophy. Uh, so Bombay had been undefeated all through my lifetime. And I was, of course, obsessed with cricket. And at that stage, the Ranji Trophy was India's premier tournament. Uh, you, it's hard to believe it, but crowds of 30, 40,000 would come to watch, for example, local derbies, Karnataka against Tamil Nadu uh, in the South Zone League, Bombay against Maharashtra in the West Zone League. It was the breeding ground for test players. Test series were held very infrequently. Not like now, where there may be 10, 12 test matches a year. There would be five, five matches every two years. So it was, a, it was a very prestigious competition. And yet there was one team at the top of it that was undefeated. So uh, uh, to draw an analogy from politics, the Congress had been undefeated all through independent India. And Bombay had also, in the field of cricket, more or less been undefeated. And in 1971, when we won off, when India won its first series overseas, test series overseas in the West Indies and in, and in England, six of the 11 players came from one city, Bombay. That was the context uh, in which the Rani Trophy was played. And by the early 70s, there was a heated rivalry between different teams jostling to defeat Bombay. And there were at least five teams in that contention all with outstanding captains. You know, captains who were just, not just fine cricketers, but also great motivators of their team, and who wanted to accomplish in their life this last ambition. Many of these captains had played for India, they achieved distinction, but they had not defeated Bombay. So they, you know, in their state teams, they would look for young cricketers, nurture them, bring them in, motivate them, uh, inculcate a, uh, a sense of team spirit, and so on. And these five captains were, E.S. Prasanna of, of uh, Karnataka, Hanuman Singh of Rajasthan, Bishan uh, Bedi of Delhi, M.L. Jaisima of Hyderabad, and S. Venkat Raghavan of Tamil Nadu. So there were these five, and they all had very good teams, as I said, inspirational captains who were all outstanding test cricketers themselves, with a mix of young and experienced players, you know, uh, in their teams. I mean, Tamil Nadu had the great Lakshmina V.V. Kumar. Uh, Delhi had the Amarnath brothers, uh, Rajasthan had Salim Durani, uh, Hyderabad had Tiger Patauti, Abbas Ali Beg, uh, Abid Ali, and so on. So it was, really, it was really a wonderful time to be a Nandi Trophy fan. Because, and you were really wondering what would happen. And it so 
turned out that it was in this city uh, in February 1974 that Bombay was defeated for the first time in 15 years. Now, I am, as you know, by professional historian. Uh, I have written about many epical events in Indian and sometimes world history. I have written about the first elections, which are now, we are now approaching the, I think it's the 18 general elections. I have written about Gandhi's life, Gandhi's death, the two world wars, uh, about all, scarcity, famine, uh, all kinds of interesting, remarkable, horrible things in the course of my uh, professional career as a historian, which is now four decades old, but it's only once when I watched history in the making. And that's when Karnataka beat Bombay for the first time. Now, <coughs> the significance, the significance, and it's still in my mind, many of uh, the incidents of that match, uh, you know, are as if they happened yesterday. But speaking as a historian, rather than as a cricket fan, the real significance of that victory was that it opened the way for other teams also to have the self-belief that they could beat Bombay. Once Prasanna's Karnataka had defeated Bombay uh, in the semi-final, they defeated Bedi's Delhi in the quarter-final, Wadekar's Bombay in the semi-final, and then Hanuman's uh, Rajasthan in the final. Once Karnataka had won the trophy, uh, it opened the way for Delhi, Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Hyderabad, services, railways, and even Gujarat to win the Rani Trophy. Uh, so it led to a decentering of Indian cricket. Indian cricket became a much more, geographically speaking, a much more egalitarian and democratic game. So it was an absolutely pivotal moment in our history, and we are here to celebrate it. Uh, we have three wonderful panelists, Arapali Prasanna, Suresh Menon, uh, arguably our finest cricket writer, uh, in this country, Sharda Ugra, arguably as the finest sports writer in this country. And here, here uh, in her capacity as a writer, not merely as the token non-Karnataka person on the panel. <laughs> uh, so what I'll be doing is I'll be calling our three panelists up. We were hoping that Sanjay Desai, another member of that team, would be here, but he uh, seems to have lost his way. Uh, uh, so, but that's fine. We, the four of us can, and with the rest of you, we can celebrate this victory. And once we are all seated here, I will begin. I will not share my own memories of that match, because I could go on till midnight, or those matches. I will ask each of the panelists, starting with Prasanna, then to, going on to Suresh, and then to Sharda, some rather focused and pointed questions, which they may choose to answer, and they say, then say whatever else they wish to. And you know, after a kind of a maybe 45, 50 minutes of conversation between us, we really would welcome uh, questions and uh, reflections and memories from all of you who have assembled here today. So may I ask Pras, Suresh, and Sharda to please come up. Today. Now, just again to refresh our memories about, about uh, that match. I mean, the match against Bombay. As I said, the, the, the quarterfinal, which was also played in the Chinnaswamy Stadium, which was then half-built with all kinds of uh, stands that had not come up, as some of you might remember. Uh, <coughs> so, Karnataka beat Delhi in the quarterfinal, and then we, we were pacing Bombay in the semifinal. Now, Pras, uh, I want to, before I ask you my question, I want to give these people some context of what Bombay was like. So it was really a battle between, shall we say, Bombay's batting and Karnataka's bowling. So there was Chandra and you, two truly great spinners. And on the other side, you had Gavaskar, Mankar, uh, Vadekar, uh, Sudhir Nayak, and so on. Now. Uh, Several years previously to that match, so this match was 74, in eight years previously, Karnataka, that was then Mysore, had gone to Bombay to play the semifinals. And on the first day, Bombay got 300 and something. And we thought, I mean, I was then only eight years old, so I didn't follow it very well, but the Mysore fans of that generation thought 
that with 300 on the board and with Prasant Chandra, we would win. But then Ajit Wadekar got 300 of his own bat. So we come here eight years later to our home ground. And <clears throat> in my view, there are two defining moments of that match. After, or three, I'll come to the first later, but Karnataka bats first. Vishwanath and Patel get hundreds. I think we get almost 400 on the board, much more than last, last time when we got 300. And then early in the Bombay innings, you beat Gavaskar with a ball, which is still debated whether it was a floater or a leg cutter. But he took his off stump, and I remember sitting in the stands that as Gavaskar walked off, he clapped you off mastery. He did that. That I remember. Then a little later, then of course Vadekar and Ashok Mankar had a stand, and then Vadekar was run out. So the first question I want to ask you, Pras, is which was the turning point? Vadekar's run out or Gavaskar's dismissal? <clears throat> hey, good evening, everyone. Well, let me be very honest. I mean, a lot of people are saying about turning points of uh, taking Gavaskar's wicket, Vadekar's run out, and uh, Ashok Mankar caught in the you know, backward shot like a whatever it is. When you play this game, it's such a game of uncertainty. You cannot just say it was Gavaskar's wicket that turned the game. Because there are 11 batsmen to come and play, so you have to take 11 wickets to win the match. But however, the Bombay always believed in players like Gavaskar, Bodeka, Mankad, and etc., etc. So the wicket of Gavaskar sort of pushed them back on their sort of defensive because I think they lost a little bit of confidence because after having taken the wicket of Gavaskar, Wadeka was on the other side. He said, what did he do? I said, he got out. That's all. You know, that was the answer. Simple. You know? I mean, there's nothing else to do because I was attempting to take his wicket and he got out. He's, you know? Because I was very firm. I knew what... Uh, Gavaskar, sorry, Wadika was intending to do because he wanted to, uh, like Bombay, it's very cleverly wanted to make me feel, you know, a lot of uh, diffident or something like that. But I said, let me not succumb to that sort of a tactics because I had played enough against them under captaincy of Subramaniam, you know, twice I think we were in semi finals. So I said, no, he got out, you know, it's as simple as that. He's, he was little pushback sort of thing in uh, whatever I know. And uh, he always believed in staying at the wicket, not making much of a stroke. Because he's a great player, there's no doubt on that issue. But Bombay cricket basically be depend, um, depend on sort of get a tall score and then the other side will get out automatically in less than that. That's how they were winning all the time. And this time it was a different story. So I knew that by looking at uh, Gavaskar's eyes, I'm sorry, Wadeka's eyes, he was not too happy that Gavaskar got out because he depended on him quite a bit because uh, he still believed his uh, 300, uh, I mean, five, 800 runs in West Indies yes. and many runs he has scored previous to this match. So he totally depended on him. So that is the beginning of the, the end of their innings. But to be very honest, it is, I think, uh, Wadekar's run out. Because that is the... See, in cricket, there is one zo one area which is very important for a team to decide whether they are in the game or they are on the back foot. That is the middle overs. That is from lunch to the tea. If you can see even today in a test match, any side which does very well between this period are the, period, are the team which is dictating terms for the rest of the... You know, they set the trend of the match, okay? So, I was very confident that now, what I could run out was uh, soon after lunch, like that. So, we were in the game, and uh, I was very determined to see that I let them not, you know, run away from this tight situation which uh, we are we in. So, I, I still believe that what I could run out was a turning point. So, I remember, um, uh, you know, you were bowling, uh, I think uh, Mankad was batting. He played a ball to point. Vadekar came and uh, then he said no. He saw Sudhakar advance. Sudhakar threw the ball and I have written somewhere 
that Pras was waiting for that ball for half a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. I was not waiting. I knew it was happening. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but one last thing, plus. So uh, many years later, I met Vadekar. And I asked him, what happened? Why did you get run out? So he shrugged. You know, Vadekar, as you said, he scored very slowly. He also was a man of very few words. He hardly spoke. So I asked him, what happened? He said, new shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But then, of course, after you beat Bombay, were you quite confident that you would uh, comfortably beat Rajasthan? Or you were worried about Durrani and Parthasarthi Sharma and Hanumant and all that? See, let me be uh, very honest. I took over the captaincy from Mr. Subramaniam. Ah, okay. And I can, uh, do admit that uh, I learned quite a bit about how to lead a side and how to pick a side and what should be the strength of the side, which makes the side look stronger, or the, the factor that one likely to win. You know, all these factors, because Subhu and I were very close, and we had discussed many times, and uh, Vishwanath was picked by Subhu by watching a match, I think, St. Joseph, you, you know, he was a very good student of the game. So, when we played two games semi-finals under his captaincy, when uh, Wadaker scored 300 odd runs, yeah. no doubt he played brilliantly, but quite a few ch chances we missed out also, you know, I think in the... Players like Gavaskar, Wadeka, when they offer a chance in the initial stages, you got to take it because yeah. they are such players, you know. They will never give another chance. So, but apart from that, what I was trying to say was that those two games which we played and also when we when I took over, I also, I think, uh, reached quite a few times. I won once or twice semifinals and once, I think, quarterfinals we meet, met Bombay. I felt, yes, I think we can beat them. Only thing is, what was required for Karnataka was the self-belief. Yeah. Which, you know, a South Indian team never believes in themselves, basically. Unfortunate. <laughs> even though, even though talent-wise, they are extremely talented. Like to mention Sudhakar, yeah. you know, Jay Prakash, Vijay Krishna, Vijay Kumar. Yeah. If you remember, we had one batsman, K. Yeah, yeah. who scored about 809 uh, 900 runs yeah. in Rajgur Trophy. But when you talk to him, he had never showed that he is a player who scored 800 runs. You know what I'm trying to say is that basic lack of confidence is not there. But I, during the course of six to seven years of my captaincy, uh, five years I think, 69 I took over, 74, I had totally assessed my side because uh, thanks to KSA, they, Persisted with me as a captain. That's also an important factor, <laughs> you know. So, you know, really, because in, I mean, a lot of things happen in uh, selection okay, anyway. So when I, 74, by that time I realized I had drawn a line, in the back nine and the front nine, you know, uh -huh. and both were sheet anchors of the side. Back nine, we knew that there are two bowlers who can do it. Yeah. And I knew one supporting bowler I required. Yeah. If if he plays, I had another bowler like Vijay Krishna who could yeah. bowl well as well. And the front line, I knew we had the great players like uh, Vishwanath, Vijayesh Patel. Yeah. You know, and then Sudhakar was there. And, and Kirman, and Kirman, Kirman in the back line, you know, yeah. because he was I coming in there after beating. six or yeah. seven. Yeah. 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 So I had drawn a line. I knew, yeah. right? So the I had planned myself because uh, Karnataka team never met. A team management, you know, that team meeting and all those things we never believed. <laughs> because, yeah, uh, you know, because I, I thought I'm, I'm a captain, so I would rather take the decision and take the blame as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I had totally assessed my time in team. When we first met Delhi, in Delhi, and uh, we won, that was a sort of a confidence booster because they had a very strong side. With vision captain and as you said, you know, Amar Nath, Madan Lal, yeah. Chetan Chauhan, yeah, yeah. very all good those, type. Yeah. Very Even good that uh, Venkat Sundaram and Venkat all Sundaram. Those, yeah, you see. Yeah. So when wins, I we won the match. I knew I think our team is now you know had the capability of winning. Only thing is we should get that uh, bit of an advantage, as we call in cricket, 
rubber the green, you know, spin of the yeah. coin. Yeah. So we, we wanted to bat first all the time because yeah. I always believe whether it's a green top wicket or whatever it is, I only look at it on the fourth day or the yeah. last day of the match, yeah. which we had the spinners to. Right? Yeah. So that was the basic approach. So Delhi win uh, uh. is the win which really gave me a lot of confidence yeah. that we are there. Yeah. As luck would have it, or say, we have to meet uh, Bombay in semis, but in, it was in Bangalore. I was very confident that we'll do well because Vijesh was in top form, Vishy was in top form, yeah. And uh, with these two, we don't have to define to them their responsibilities. Yeah. And A, apart from that, every member of the team, somehow they gave me an impression they all knew their responsibilities. Uh -huh. you know, that is, I think, uh, it's a great quality to have a team with 10 people, 11 people, yeah. realizing their role uh -huh. for the team, I think makes the captain's yeah. job a yeah. lot more easier. Yeah. So as luck would have it, yes, I won the toss. I decided to bat. What I cast me, you're going to bat. Yes, of course, sir. definitely. You know, <laughs> uh, he was already as fifty percent gone because, <laughs> you know. So I, I mean, see, cricket is a ecological game. Yeah. You yeah. know, as you, as you know that you have interacted with Mike Braley. Yeah. When I used to bowl at him, we used to see eye to eye. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> when I used to bowl a good ball, he used to smother the spin. You know, he used to turn this way. <laughs> you know, that gave me an indication, oh, you're not too confident about me. You know, like that, to an, uh, sort of an example. So when uh, Wadeka asked me that question, I realized, oh, <laughs> I think he's little, you know, nervous. And we scored, I think, 395 or 396 yeah, yeah. runs. And a uh, well, lot of hope from KSCA management because, you know, 396, two spinners. Oh, we'll win. But they were 170 or something for one or two wickets, yeah. you know, whatever yeah. it is. So I still remember a lot of uh, management, same people. Ah, oh, what sort of a captaincy this is, ah, oh, you know, <laughs> as usual. So one of them said, don't worry, no, no issue on that, you know. Captaincy is mine. <laughs> Easy to talk at the, and outside the boundary line. So, I, so to be okay. very honest, you know, Suri, Pradhamani, yeah, you know, yeah, so now I'm here. Unfortunately, no, no more. So I met him in City Institute because on the way I was staying in Jainagar. I just happened to drop in to City Institute and then go. He was there, so he asked me what happened. I said, Nothing happened. What has happened? You know, 170 for two. <laughs> so what? There's still 180 runs to go. Yeah. You know, you'll see tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, really? He said <laughs> in Canada. I said yeah. <laughs> Then he said, I'll send you a glass of beer. I said, sure. You better make sure you'll get the beer for me, OK? <laughs> I was so confident that, you know, I mean, there's no doubt on this issue. So I said, OK. Yeah. Right? Following day, as I said, no. I think uh, first initial series, they lost two more wickets. And then between lunch and tea, when yeah. what I, care, uh, I yeah. said, yeah, this is it. Okay. I cannot just. I stepped on that, and uh, I think, unfortunately, what happened was, in that particular game, Chandra was bowling well in patches. Uh -huh. You know, you, you eventually took some three or four wickets. That's yeah. a, it's not the point. So I used Lakshman. Yeah. You know, as a backup uh, bowler. Yeah. 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 And even though people, many people thought he's old, too old to play. All right, he's not the old. Effectiveness is what matters to me. You yeah. know, that's what yeah. I believe. And uh, he told me, I just told him, you just bowl your stuff. See that you don't concede any runs, six or seven rows, and you'll see what will happen. So I bowled one side from the pavilion end, I think, throughout. Yeah. I yeah. think 50 odd over, 60 overs, some five or six wickets I took, I think. And he bowled so well, and he gave the, the breathing, I mean, second breath to Chandra. Uh -huh. When he came back, uh -huh. he was unplayable. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I, if and he, really. cleaned, he cleaned up the tail. He cleaned up the tail. I mean, yeah. Yeah. when two of us are bowling, yeah. the question was, uh, they were trying to avoid to play. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, I could see that. Because none of them could face Chandra. Yeah. None of them were able to read me. Yeah. You know? yeah. They thought they'd play yeah. me, but they couldn't read me. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. 
as long as it does the purpose, you know. Yeah. So eventually, and uh, no doubt, we had a wonderful wicket keeper, Sayed yeah. Kirmani, yeah. who because to keep Chandra, yeah. you know, up to the stumps, one has to be extremely good. And I still feel India is possibly one of the best wicket keepers, Sayed Mustafa Kirmani. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and uh, yeah. when he supported Chandra to that, because I think. Someone got out being stumped off the, yeah. on the onside. You know, he's the only one who could do it. So, yeah. with, uh, with Syed Kirmani at the back yeah. as a keeper, Chandra at his best, second spell, third right, spell, whatever right. it is, yeah. I knew that he'll yeah. win and be won. Let me come to Suresh. So, Suresh, uh, you know, uh, I'll come back to perhaps to some of your choices later. You know, Suresh, you were, uh, uh, you're a little younger than me. I think you must have been 14 at the time of the match. Now, uh, I uh, I grew up in UP, and I strategically chose to support Karnataka at the age of eight. Nice. Because uh, uh, Pras mentioned Subhu. When I was eight, Subramaniam, Subramanya, Prasanna, and Chandrasekhar, three people. My I was figuring out whether I should choose Tamil Nadu, where my ancestors came from, or Karnataka, where my grandparents had settled, and where my uncle, who used to play cricket, played with. So I was figuring out, then I saw. Karnataka has three players. UP, of course, forever had zero, but Karnataka had three. Now, for you, the choice must have been even easier because you had to choose between Kerala and Karnataka. <laughs> okay. I but, don't think I don't think Kerala came into it at all. <laughs> <laughs> but having said that, I want you to speak about your memories of that match. Where were you sitting? Who took you there? What you saw? What you remember? What you don't remember? What is myth? What is history? How you went back to it? So tell us, as a, a little boy of fourteen. Uh, as you know, um, uh, the wonderful Ian Peebles quote, there are no cricketers like those seen through 12-year-old eyes. You were more or less 12. So tell us about watching this great man and Vishy and Chandra and everyone else. The, the, the season was a wonderful one. 74, the year actually, was a wonderful season for more than one reason, personally. Uh, one is that I had, I had now qualified into the school, uh, school team. I, had, I, I was in the school team at 13. But that I was in the reserves. 14, I was in the, in the main team. And one of the things the school did was to send a few of us, three of us, I think, to the KCA for coaching under Keki Tarapo. And the wonderful thing I was just talking, I just uh, spoke to Pras about this a little while ago, was that the wonderful thing they did was uh, we were allowed, we, our, our nets were close to the, to the Ranji nets. And... Uh, you know, people like Pras and Chandra would drop in, speak to us because Keki was there and Keki was Chandra's coach and stuff. You know, they, they, there was a, there was an easy sort of uh, camaraderie. You know, Pras Pras would come and speak to some of us. In fact, it's it's not only the 50 years of uh, Ranji triumph; it's also the 50 years since uh, I've known Pras. And and uh, I I think it was an important it, it was an important thing because it meant that. My already uh, sort of obsessive nature, my already my uh, my uh, quite well honed obsession with cricket, was further sort of uh, you know uh, polished, shall I say, uh, that year. And uh, it meant it me it meant that I was also given a pass for the for the Bombay match, and and it was incredible because I I distinctly remember the the famous. I mean, we didn't use the expression then, but the ball of the century, which uh, Pras bowled to to Sunny, and uh, which Sunny still talks about, and uh, it 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 sort of uh, the early Ranji matches I watched, I usually went with my father. My father, my parents were obsessed, not obsessed, but they were terrific uh, fans of the game, and Dad ensured that I went for all the matches. So I, I've been watching cricket at the Central College. Uh, from 69-70, when, when Australians came under Bill Laurie, and Pras nearly won the match for South Zone with a spell of 6 for 11 in 12 overs or something. And then Bill Laurie and John Gleason padded out everything, umpires didn't get the decisions, da 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 That was that. But the point I'm trying to make is that I saw, I saw uh, the cricket stadium as a second home. So 74, 73, 74, when, when Bombay came here, I was given a, a pass, I think KK organized it, which meant that I was in a fairly decent place from which uh, to watch the match, which was quite incredible. 
and it meant that uh, there, there was there was a you know you, you can have passion on one side and you can have a, a sort of a desire on another side but unless uh, there is it comes to it is fructified in some way and at at 14 what you want is basically victory you want your team to win and when the team wins and then goes on to win the big one then then sort of uh, all the stars are in alignment and and you know that you're lost to the game forever and 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 uh, pras whom I, whom I met then and was extremely kind to me later many years later when i became a, a, a journalist i joined the deccan herald and uh, i met pras professionally he he told me something which which i held very dear then he said uh, Suresh, you're a, you're a reporter now. You should do well. I shall be watching your career with a great deal of interest. And you've still been watching my career with a great deal of interest, for which I'm, I'm genuinely thankful. And, and these are kind of things that you can't, you know, uh, get otherwise. Of the match itself, what are your views? Of the, the Bombay match. Of yeah. the Bombay match, I, I distinctly remember the, the Ajit Wadeka run out. Although it seems like... Uh, there was a, there was a. I remember Wadeka shaking his head. I, I don't. You have strange memories from matches. I remember Wadeka's sort of shake of the head as he's walking off, and when when that was happening, uh, Chandra, who who wasn't even involved in the action, yeah. was somewhere near the boundary. He he was sort of talking to somebody in the in the in the in the audience. Yeah. It, it seemed to me that Chandra was turning to somebody in the audience and saying something like, "Okay, now." You know, now we are getting somewhere, or now it's over, or some such. I don't know. I, maybe this is a uh, a post sort of <laughs> match impression. But the fact is that I I I remember these these two, uh, and maybe I've built on this by you know constantly talking about it and writing about it. But I do remember the the Gavaskar dismissal. I do remember the and after the match, interestingly, after the match, uh, KK got us together in a group and and asked the same question that you're asking. What are your impressions of the match? What did you think of this? What did you think of that? And I think that kind of thing sort of uh, uh, settled it or sort of solidified it uh, in, our, in our minds of, of all the boys who were, who were in that camp. Shata, I, you know, uh, uh, you were, of course, too young. You were born probably after the match. And, uh, uh, but you have followed, we, as I said, we have you here uh, because of who you are. And only incidentally, because you, of course, you settled here, but we, we hope your primary allegiance is still somewhere else, <laughs> uh, to Bombay. Uh, yes. But you know, uh, you have watched very closely uh, and written about the second generation of Karnataka greats. So the first generation was Pras, Chandra, Vishwanath, uh, Kirbali, and also Shanta Rangaswamy, who's often forgotten. The first great female cr cr cricketer comes from our state, and I believe along with Pras Chandra Vishi, a stand should be named after her too, you know. Okay, but you watch the next generation, you know, which is all of them. So, uh, you know, it, how do you see them as cricketers, in, uh, not just as players, their style of game? Is there, you know, is there a kind of a, a Karnataka gharana, like there was a Bombay gharana, and, and a Delhi gharana? And so just, you know, Tell us um, about all that. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Ram, for having me on the stage here. I was very puzzled by what I was doing here. I said, listen, I come from Bombay, and we are not talking about number of titles, etc., etc., but I come from Bombay. So by the way, loyalty... uh, just for the record, <laughs> for the record, as Rajdeep Sandesh, I never fails to remind people on Twitter, I think Karnataka has eight titles and Bombay has 45? 42. 42. 42. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. But, but uh, Karnataka is, uh, after Bombay slash Mumbai, Karnataka has won more Ranji Trophy titles than any other state in the country. So I think it has to be recorded here officially. Yeah. Um, no, so uh, when I grew up and into cricket in a way, I'd always heard about Vishi, the great GRV. And I'd seen uh, sort of the end of the great spinners, the, 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 the quartet's career. I didn't see them bowl on television. I didn't see Sir bowl on, uh, on TV in any way. Bedi little bit. But Vishi we had heard of, it's almost like he was a cult figure. And I saw a little bit of his batting on, on TV and so on. And when this whole new lot of Karnataka cricketers came, they didn't come in one and twos, they came in a big batch. Yeah. So again, it was like six Bombay players, you had six Karnataka players or five Karnataka players in the team. It's like, who are these guys? Where are they from? 
and uh, the gharana of it uh, everyone said oh they are very well behaved they are very polite they speak very nicely but they're i not think involved in match fixing <laughs> <laughs> that is a forward sort of a, a, a post uh, a 21st century sort of um, uh, invention or fact or whatever but uh, the thing about them was that their competitiveness uh, was uh, uh, you, i think i don't think you can uh, for their good you know their general demeanor and 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 because this is they, they are uh, cricketers of television so there is something to be said about posturing grandstanding send offing whatever whatever but other than that what you saw about them was a certain ferocity and a certain pride in how they played uh, so i was just thinking about this uh, when uh, when so was talking that um, you know that it, you have to it's a mental game and this is how you play it and they were just fierce competitors for whichever team they played for and my favorite anil kumble story is this he wasn't even playing but this is what happened that in the world cup final which we lost to australia in 2003 india had uh, i think conceded 365 or something like that and he just told the dressing room and of course we are all in shock in the press box and we are dying and whatever and he just told them in the dressing room that listen you have to just hit a boundary every over and then after that is 160 runs of 250 balls and when you think about it, you say that is just incredible that's so simple of course it didn't happen but the point is that he presented them with this competitive option and so the sense of competition and and the pride and uh, uh, performance was your your aggression lay in your performance was the was the sort of the message that we got of course then we also venki given uh, giving the big send off to Amir Sohail and we got very excited and everything, but it was just that sense of great pride of performance, of pride of where they were from. You know, a certain uh, almost and I'm, I'm not saying all as much pride as it was for a Bombay cricketer to be from the Bombay school. So it was to me from the Karnataka cricketer to belong to this place, uh, this culture, and uh, this sort of way of uh, of playing as well and being. being competitive being fair being a very relaxed with uh, not over aggressive in that sense but when when they had to push the pedal down and when they had to like it like they used to say in bombay uh, you know put put your foot on the neck of the opponent they knew how to do it thank you uh, plus uh, you know i just want to take you briefly back to that match the bombay match because that's the crucial match of that not just of that tournament but you know it's the definitive match of modern indian cricket history because the whole decentering of the game starts with that now we talked about two turning points uh, which is the floater or leg cutter sunny tells me it's a floater which bowled him the run out of wadekar but there's a third turning point and that happened in the first over so the first over of the match as pras said he won the toss and wadekar was unhappy but he could do nothing about it the f- i remember this vividly because i was you know uh, uh, It was so exciting. The you know, first over of a match, like a Test match, uh, Abdul Ismail, who was a very good fast bowler, you know, who really should have played for India. Uh, the first ball he bowled, and Vijay Kumar was an aggressive opening batsman. Straight drove him for four. First ball, foot. Second ball, he went for another straight drive. It moved out, caught the edge, and was caught at slip. I think by Gavaskar. Four for one, two balls. Third ball of the match, G R Vishwanath, and you know, uh, when forty thousand people in the stadium. Cheered for G R Vishwanath. You could hear it at City Railway Station. <laughs> There has been no cricketer has greatly loved. I mean, I said that absolutely. So he came in, little fellow, no helmet. Abdul Ismail bowled an in swinger, and it wrapped him here in front of the middle stump, and he was given not out. Now, uh, I got a message from Sunny today. I was reminding him about this match, and I was telling him, and I said, uh, you remember that? And he said, yes. He said, if it had been anyone else but Vishy. we bombay people would have mourned for a decade but we also wanted to watch it back <laughs> okay now uh, was that out or was that not out i you see if if sanjay desai had come he was batting at the other end but he hasn't come he's done a no show but i'll ask you was that out or was that not out i think it was not out because <laughs> okay. now i mean Let's look at it this way. In realistic terms, Vishy is a gentleman player. Yeah. You know. But you don't walk on LBW. You walk on a court behind, but not on LBW. No. He, he, he's when you are a gentleman, you walk for everything. Anyway, <laughs> you know, you concede for everything. In other words, okay. So looking at all those things, actually, it looked as though it would have hit the stumps. But actually, you know, in swinger bowling on the middle stump, if you apply the pleasant uh, DRS rule, it will be missing the leg stump. That's why it was not out. <laughs> so 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, let me ask you also. Uh, you want, Shana, you want? To? I said this is this is incredible. I don't think you can hear. Yeah. I said this is incredible. This is like a retrospective, uh, uh, retrofitted uh, DRS rule. I've never heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, by the way, uh, uh, the umpire, who incidentally was named Ganguly, <laughs> went went to back to Calcutta after the match. And he told the Bengal cricketers, one of them told me this many years ago, Eden Gardens, he said, I have done what all of you people could not do all these years. Make sure Bombay does not win the Ranji Trophy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, okay, but Pras, you know, you briefly mentioned Lakshman. Now, as I recall, Lakshman played for the same team as you, ITI. Yes, yes, yes. You know, this is, talk about inspired choices. He was 40. It was his Ranji debut at 40. Uh, he used to, we loved him because he had a bald pate. He used to come into bat and we used to say, ta 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 ta. <laughs> and, but you know, I, I looked at his figures the other day in those uh, two matches against Delhi and Bombay. 12 overs, 8 maidens, 5 runs. Yes. He just gave a rest to Chandra and sometimes to you to Pras. I mean, it was an inspired choice. But you had played with him in club cricket, so you knew him that way? Yes, you know, when Bishan saw him, he said, Where did you get this old man? Huh? Yes. <laughs> Where did you get from this old man into the old team? Said. Yeah, ah. I have to tell him. He looks as old as you are. I know. I have to tell him. <laughs> but one thing, see, look, he's the most underrated uh, cricketer because, as, as I said earlier, Lakshman, at any given point of time, never projected himself as a good cricketer. Okay, yeah. but when he was as a cricketer, I looked at him as a cricketer and his utility on the field. And in the context of the team, yes. to give a respite to yes. Chandra. And you, because, yeah, yeah. see, Vijay Krishna was a terrific bowler. Yeah. But you can't use Vijay Krishna to restrict rate of scoring. So, on the contrary, he may hasten the defeat. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so, I had to depend on Lakshman. And I, had to, I had told him, this is your role. Okay? And he did exactly the same thing every time he was asked to bowl. So... Well, there he is, and I should say that uh, our win against Bombay, largely also depends on Lakshman's contribution yeah, to the absolutely, game. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. See, no, same thing, I'm sorry. Huh. You see, the Mohit Ramanath, huh. okay? I was leading the rest of India team against Bombay in Bangalore, okay? We won the match, you know? Uh, K. N. Prabhu said I, I was given a token... Uh, for appreciation for having played for the country as a captain, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, when we won the match, he says you are a good captain. You know, that's how it is. You know? And Mohin Ramanath exactly did the same thing. I asked him to do exactly the same thing in that particular match. He exactly replica Lakshman bowling. Uh -huh. But if you really look at the effectiveness of Mohin Ramanath, is as, as good as Lakshman. Right. Lakshman didn't play for India, but oh, yeah. for international cricket. He always gave the break that was required. So, Mohin Ramanath, beside being a brilliant all-rounder and an excellent student of the game, played the same role for India. So, what I'm trying to say is, you do require one bowler or one batsman who can stay at the wicket as a batsman or bowl tight overs if, if you have a chance to win the match because that's how when you have a bowling attack, we can take wickets. You got to have one bowler blocking one side because the pressure should be on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Lakshman played the throw. So uh, Suresh, uh, you know, uh, for you and me, uh, that eleven is sacred. You know, the eleven that trust captain, and we can read it out in batting order: V. S. Vijay Kumar, Sanjay Desai, G. R. Vishwanath, Brijesh Patel, Sudhakar Rao. Uh, B. Vijay Krishna, Sayyad Kirmani, A. V. Jay Prakash, A. S. Prasanna, B. S. Chandrasekhar, K. Lakshman. All right. So that's B. Raghunath, 12th man. Let's not forget him. So, sacred. But pick for us very quickly. And you have, uh, can someone have a timer, 90 seconds? We'll give 120 seconds. An all time Karnataka 11. Oh, that should be you easy. Must have done that. <laughs> often, often. Okay. Uh, we start. Uh, we, we, this is the first class 11. First class 11, yeah. Okay. We have K. L. Rahul. Uh, Vijay Kumar. Not Budhi Kundaran? No, you don't have the answer. Yeah. Vijay. Okay. I'm, I'm a, okay, this, this, this is a, I, I'm the sole selector. Okay. And okay, fine. 
all, all my biases will be seen fine, here. Fine. Okay. So, K.R. Rahul, so, Vijay Kumar. Vijay Kumar, uh, Vishnath, Patel, Sudhaka, Rahul. Uh, oh, we'll have to change the batting order we'll around a bit. Sudhakar. We might have to drop Sudhaka to 12th yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, uh. so that's five. And then we've got Kiri, uh. six. We've got Srinath, seven. No, Srinath, seven is too early, but Srinath <laughs> in the... Not in the batting order, Srinath seven. Uh. Did I say Kimani? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so we have a wicket keeper. Uh, now comes the tricky part. <laughs> I mean, nine, 10 and 11 are fine, uh. but... Uh, and Kumle? Pra this is the this is the tricky yeah. part. Chandra versus Kumble. Yeah. Again, uh, please don't. Nobody mentioned this to Anil Kumble, but probably Pras and Chandra. <laughs> <laughs> Ram is playing the same role which uh, Karnataka selectors do, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> getting you into trouble. <laughs> okay, Kumble. So that's please, please, so oh, we. Joshi. No, between Joshi and Vijay Krishna, I think I'll have Vijay Krishna. Okay, Vijay Krishna and, uh, and one more fast bowler, Roger? Yeah, Roger, Roger. Uh, Vijay Krishna. Uh, Vijay. Oh, okay. yeah. So the man who has 619 wickets is 12th man <laughs> for India. Well, if he's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we'd also like the audience to get in a bit. Ram, so just one thing, Ajay. Yeah. So, you were just speaking about, you know, the, the Karnataka cricketers, the, the, the generation in the 90s that, uh, that I ran into and I happened to watch and meet and know. I think Srinath was a very interesting uh, character in that story and he's very central to the development of Indian fast bowling. Yeah. Uh, you know, because he was sort of the post Kapil Dev. Uh, uh, there was a very strange phase where Indian uh, fast bowlers came and went very like revolving doors. And Srinath was a guy who came in 92 and he stuck on. And all the cliches that you had heard about fast bowling, he just completely stood them on their head. Oh, he's vegetarian. He says sorry when he bowls a bouncer. He says all these kind of things. And he was just so, you know, people says you don't realize how quick he was. Of course, I will never realize how quick. So he used to, where I live now, apparently Srinath used to stay there uh, when he was at uh, Vijaya Bank. And all the kids used to play in the afternoon and they said, come and play with us and all. So he said, please. He said, no, no, please, little bit. So he used to come there and he said, he's literally, he's bowling like 30% and they couldn't see the ball. Mm -hmm. So, and, and when the, uh, the, the building guys had to put up a team to go and play against other building guys, this is come on. Javagal Srinath has come in to bowl for us, the match is over. So I think he's also a very important figure there because then he became almost the leader of the generation of fast bowlers. Um, Zaheer and Nera that that have led to Bumrah and you know all the people that follow, because he was able to break through this almost uh, Kapil Dev type of uh, uh, almost stronghold of who the fast bowlers are going to be for India. He sort of outlasted that and he yeah. and he uh, he created a certain uh, it's it's almost like he created a separate uh, uh, fast bowling school outside of. So as much as. Uh, the 93 Karnataka broke this, this thing of Bombay. Yeah. I think Javagal Srinath yeah. played a very important part. You're absolutely part right. I'll add one more footnote to that, which is relevant to what you say, Sharda. That within the context of Karnataka, see, as we've argued, I think we all agreed, within the context of Indian cricket, what Prasa's team did was to democratize and decentralize Indian cricket. But what Srinath did was he was the first major cricketer from outside Bangalore. He was from Mysore. Yeah. So then you had Joshi from Gadak, uh, Rahul from... Uh, you know, from the coast, from Surat Kal. So he was a pioneer even in the context of our state. You know, because it's very tough to get it. I mean, you had, as Pras was saying the other day, you know, the you had to play for BUC, the, city, for BUCC or Pras, so the cities too. controlled everything. The big yeah. major urban centers controlled yeah, everything, exactly. not I, I, Mysore yeah, and, you know, yeah, wherever else. Yeah, in that, in that 73-74 site, there was just one player from Mysore, Vijay Prakash. And he was, you never played. And he never no, played. he was in the reserves. But what I would say is that, I think Javagal Srinath was possibly one of the best fast bowlers that India has ever produced. But unfortunately, he did not get the same mileage as Kapil Dev. Yeah. You know, even though he was the first man to show that in, on Indian soil, because everyone felt Indian soil is, I mean, cricketing pitch is not that good for a fast bowler, it's all most of the time is tailored for a spinner. But he's the only one who was bowling possibly as fast as anybody else yeah. of the present era. And I think against Hyderabad, he had a hat-trick, I think, yeah, you know. He started yeah. with a hat-trick. And as a fast bowler, I, I feel very sorry about this because he should have got the same write-up right. as Kapil Dev. Because Kapil Dev, when once he did, yeah. not a, now today, he is the, I mean, you know, he stands out as a fast bowler, right? 
and he missed a lot of test matches. Srinath sat, a lot, sat out a lot because of games. Because at home, yeah, yeah. Because he was, no, because he was not picked. Yeah, you know, I, he was, I, I, if I remember a match in Bangalore, but Kapil was picked, he was aging, he was ineffective, but he had to break the record. That's right. yeah. And he and Prabhakar were, and Srinath was not picked, we had three, we had to have three spinners. So, the, yeah. the Kapil Dev phenomenon in fast bowling is a very interesting one, but not at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, uh, something I wanted to say about, uh, but it, it, it'll come back to me. You know, uh, Sharda, I wanted to uh, ask you, oh yeah, I, this now I remember. I was, you know, the, you, we, are, we are talking about Prasanna bowling to Gavaskar, right? Uh, and Vadekar, uh, Prasanna Chandrasekhar. And all these epic contexts uh, within the context of the Ranji Trophy. And those stopped happening. Siddharth once told me, I once was on a flight with him. And uh, for a long, long international flight, we happened to be next to each other. I asked him, what is your one regret? He said, I never bowled to Tendulkar in a Ranji Trophy match. And I showed him. <laughs> I had done to him what Prasad I did to Gavaskar, right? But he never did that. So, you know, I think that is something where we didn't have these, these contests. Uh, we, I shortly open it up for questions, but I had one question of Sharda. You know, here we are celebrating uh, this great team led by Prasanna, eight titles. Will RCB ever win a title? <laughs> you tell us. I will be the happy to do what you tell us. The women already have. Huh? So, the women already have. <laughs> RCB have won a title. It's up to the no, gentleman. Huh? I said it's up to the gentleman. You follow. All right. I uh, the mic will go around, and uh, uh, who would like to ask the first question or make the first comment? Yeah, the gentleman here. I'll come. The gentleman here. Then I'll come there. Yeah. The gentleman here. Yeah. The yeah, mic is coming. The mic is coming. Yeah. If you could just raise your hands, and I'll just look for whoever's. So it's fascinating to listen to Prasanna and other panelists about the 74 uh, Ranji Trophy triumph. Question to Prasanna. We had stalwarts like V. Subramaniam, whom you mentioned, and uh, stalwart as a captain, stalwart as a batsman. And prior to him, G. Kasturi Rangan. Both inspiring leaders and inspiring cricketers in their own right. I'm sure they contributed to the building up of the team, which led to the 74 and subsequent victories and uh, triumph in the Ranji Trophy. Any comments? I think Subramanya Pras has already acknowledged his contribution. You want to say anything yeah, on the yeah. earlier generation? No. LT, Adishesh, all those people? No, no, no. Ah. Well, <clears throat> let me be very honest. LT, Adishesh, Subhu, Kasturangan, you know, all credit goes to them only because they are the people who can kept the game alive as far as Karnataka is con concerned. And I owe my cricket to Kasturangan because I played under him. Under his captaincy, he inducted five of the youngsters, five youngsters against Hyderabad at Hyderabad. He like YB Patel, uh, K.R. Rajagopal, there was one, uh, well, B. Ramakrishna, you know, myself, you know, one more, right. Another S. Krishna. Right. All five of us, we, he inducted into the state team against Hyderabad, which was, was led by Jaisima. Okay? So we vote to him as well. There's no doubt of it, that I am not de denying your fact that he has been also instrumental for Karnataka to achieve what was achieved in 74. You know, by the way, uh, the, the first Karna Mysore team to reach the final was against Holkar, I think it was the early 40s. Uh, and Holkar got 912 for 8 declared. <laughs> and uh, V.A. Mudaya, who was not in the team, told me this story that, you know, she can I do one another. He said, uh, if, um, you know, the, the yards we covered chasing the ball to the boundary and back, we could have walked, walked take, instead of taking a train, we could have walked back, walked back to back. <laughs> back along. Yeah, the question here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think Subhu was very important because by that time, the nucleus had come. You know, there was Pras and Chandra, and uh, all the, and of course, then of course, Pras took it to another level all, all together. Yeah. Uh, you've described in great detail the Bombay game, but the final wasn't mentioned at all. So, can you tell us a little yeah. bit about, about actually match. winning it? The Rajasthan match. He wants to know about the Rajasthan match in Jaipur, which we won rather easily, so yeah. we don't remember no, it. it was <laughs> No, it was not a difficult match as such because the confidence that we had after winning against Bombay, that was, that was good enough to carry us through the uh, Rajasthan match, even though, as luck would have it, I don't think uh, 
Salim Dharan was totally fit. He had some sort of a problem with his eye. But still, the unpredictable cricketer and the great all-rounder Salim was. He had Vijesh and uh, Vishwanath very, on a very low score, you know, something 20 odd and 5 odd or something like that. But as I said earlier, my lower half of the team was so good. Vijay Krishna, Jai Pakash, Syed Kirmani, and Vijay Kumar, who batted first. They are the people who contributed when these two have failed. See, the, base, the idea of any team, any team, you know, if this sort of a responsibility taking over, you know, if someone fails, someone lifts his game and uh, pulls the side out of the trouble, is the, speaks the strength of the team. And uh, so we had that side, and that sort of a side to maneuver Rajasthan. And again, luck, spin of the coin was in my favor. I won the toss, I batted first. And uh, well, with Chandra around, I think uh, it was, he made things very easily. Even though I took some wickets, but mm. a lot of credit goes to Chandra and uh, Vijay Kumar, Lakshman, Vijay Patel, and uh, yeah. batsmen like Saiz Kirmani, Su Sudhakar, and uh, Vijay M and Jai Prakash, you know, they all contributed some 70 or 60 or, and they, I think that's how we scored something like 280 or 300 odd runs. And the wicket was uh, very conducive to our type of spin bowling, so it was fairly, it looked easy. Pras, tell us about uh, Rajasthan's uh, secret weapon that uh, they fed you before the match or during oh, the match. Yeah. But anyway, you know, I mean, uh, each state has its own way of handling the opponents. <laughs> yeah. When you go to Bombay, the body language itself will run you down. You know, so, oh my goodness, you know, we are facing some. The way in which they walk around, they think that, uh, you know, we are uh, just a question of a walkover, like that Bombay. When we were in Delhi, they say, one person used to say, oh, ye kaega, oh, kaega, vision, ye kaega, oh, kaega. Someone asked me, person, oh, kun kaega. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's how they talk. Kaiga, Kaiga, you know, but they think that everything is Kaiga, you know, but anyway, okay. So, in, uh, when we went to Rajasthan, we, they didn't have that uh, body language or the strength to say Kaiga, but they gave us a, a liquid known as Bang. <laughs> well, anyway, I mean, we are all not sane, but we also thought it was a milk product, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> When we took, after a couple of drinks, we realized it is something else. <laughs> but luckily, it uh, boosted the cheer. I mean, the whole team was in a cheerful mood. So, <laughs> it, it, so it happened that you know the following day we could perform very well. It was it around holy. Uh, so it was it around holy time that they did this. Was it? It was holy. Yeah, that's never why mind it was about holy. But what matter? happened? They thought that will be sort of uh, sluggish and, this and that. But it proved them, you know, sort of uh, the other way around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, Pras. It's fascinating listening to you. Uh, I just wanted one clarification. When you people mentioned Lakshman, is it K. R. Lakshman No, 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 no. no, no. no, no. Yeah, was leg break bowler. K. Lakshman. Uh, leg break. The leg break bowler. Lakshman. Left arm. I think he played in that uh, rest of India versus Karnataka. Uh, no, I no. don't. You know. Karnataka against the rest of India, he played. Yeah. No, Ahmedabad. why I'm asking you is that I was a 13-year-old. I was in Ahmedabad. The team had come to Ahmedabad. I think it was as Ranji champions versus the West Indies. The visiting West Indies, probably. He played in that match. I remember the leg spinner. Yeah. And oh, he okay. The, the leg spinner was C.R. Lakshmana, right? K.R. Lakshmana. K.R. Lakshmana was the left arm spinner. Okay. Yeah, so but, K.R. Lakshmana but played in this no, team. You're, you're Lakshmana right. Ryan played elsewhere. You're, yeah. you're right, because uh, Rasa of India was his champions, which was played in Ahmedabad. Uh -huh. When uh, I think Gavaska played out throughout the innings, I think, carried his bat. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. I remember that match because Lakshmana Ryan really bowled wonderfully. Even the West Indies against the West Indies. Not West Indies, I'm talking about the rest of India. Rest of India, yes. But the, the, you also played against uh, the West Indies, visiting West Indies as Ranji champions. I think they're visiting. Uh, that was, that uh, was nothing, maybe 77. 76, I think. No. Uh, no. Uh, I just wanted to share one memory of uh, you know your visit to Ahmedabad. I remember the Karnataka Sangha had organized a, a reception for the team. 
and all of you were there. It was a wonderful moment when everyone had come. Uh, as usual, the stars were in the front line and uh, the rest of the team was in the second line. Where were they sitting at the back? No, you were in front. <laughs> all of you were in the front and we had a wonderful event and then the entire audience rushed towards you. As a 13-year-old boy, I remember I also rushed. But, uh, you know, the, uh, by the time I reached, the only star I could reach to was Saeed Kirmani. He was in the second row and was sitting quietly. You know, so Kirmani had that weakness to see, meet people also. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Yeah. it was nice Thank to you. Yeah, it was Thank, Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's coming. Yeah. Hi, my name is Krishna. My uh, father actually went to see the uh, semi-final in Bangalore and I was a schoolboy hearing the radio. And I still have, uh, you know, a sports week from 1974 of this match. I recently saw the scorecard and I was really surprised to see that Bombay played 135 overs. And out of the 135 overs, uh, Prasanna, sir, you bowled 63 overs in that innings and Chandrasekhar bowled 44 overs in that one innings. So what was the secret of the fitness to bowl 63 overs in one innings in the semi-finals? Uh, before I ask Pras to answer that, Pras never went to a gym. <laughs> exactly. And yet he could bowl 63 overs. Exactly. exactly. So, so which is why I'm asking, what was the secret of the fitness to bowl 63 overs in an innings? See, it was in, it was in need of the hour. I mean, you know, we, had, we were in a winning state and uh, there was no way I, as a captain, could you know, give away the, the position we were in. And as I said earlier, Chandra was not bowling well in spells, but he was bowling well in, uh, when he was given a break and sort of. So I thought I must play the role of keeping the pressure as well as attempting to take a wicket, which was the main objective for that 63 overs I bowled. But I still remember the effort, end of the day, it was, I think it was a useful effort. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll come, I'll come. Yeah, 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 the front. No, wait for, please wait for the mic, please wait for the mic. I, I'll come to everyone. Yeah. Sir, I already never saw you, but I always heard on commentary of your bowling and all that. I just wanted to know what is the kind of fitness regime you were following those days <laughs> in terms of diet and this and whatever else. That's the least interesting part of Prasanna's genius. Yeah, but there's been a huge transformation in that part of the game now. For that, I thought. See, unfortunately, until 85, the Board of Control for Cricket in India never thought that the players should be well supported with, you know, for their, their physical fitness or whatever it is. Because why I say 85, I was lucky enough to take the Indian team to Australia, the Benson Edges, okay? I was the manager. This so I it, felt it, the it, it, 85, 85, 85, yeah. 85, when you won. Yeah. When uh, Ravi Shastri won the Audi car and yeah. you know, we won the tournament though, okay? I, that is the first time I felt that the need of a supporting staff because I had to take the drinks to the, uh, to the players while practicing. I need to bowl at them in the nets because, you know, our attack was such, we, I, they required me also to bowl, you know. And then I had to, anyway, I had to keep in touch with the doctors because our good habits were such, possibilities are there. And, anyway, okay, all these things. So I was doing all by myself, okay. But I think 85 onwards, I felt I mean, there's a change in uh, the approach. And uh, for 11 or 15 players, I think now they have about 25 supporting staff. <laughs> okay? Is it? I think so. So, unfortunately, while we were playing, our fitness was only mind. We had to think that we are fit enough to play, we played. And passion. There are two factors which, which forced us to play this game was one, passion to play. And second thing is, we are good enough to play. And third thing is, we are fit enough to play. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please. Yep. Uh, hello, sir. Prasanna, sir. Sir, uh, uh, in Karnataka, if you look at the history of the game, we've produced more test bowlers than batsmen. Is that just a case of a tradition or is it just the way the cricket has been? Uh, in Karnataka. Karnataka has more, produced more test bowlers than batsmen. 
and why is that? Yeah, yes, it's a very interesting question. You know why? In Karnataka, we always played one day cricket. Even club cricket was all one, one day cricket. cricket. Okay. But eventually, we turned out to be good five day players. I don't know how, but anyway, it's a, it's a myth. You did. We did. Honestly, it's a good question, actually. Yeah. At the back, yeah? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we have on stage two people who witnessed the so-called ball of the century that you, that you spoke about and the man who bowled it as well. But we still haven't kind of, uh, like, could we have a description of that ball from uh, Prasanna sir himself, like, the ball to Gavaskar? Right. I think uh, you're the first person to ask me about, to describe that particular ball. You know, <laughs> yes, anyway. Let me honestly tell you one thing. I when, I, when I bowl, I bowl with a purpose, and I used to bowl. Whether it was Gavaskar, Gary Sobers, Rohan Kanai, it doesn't bother me at all. I bowl at a batsman. And you know, this game, even though it is a batsman's game, the game will not start unless the bowler bowls. <laughs> Therefore, I always believe I am in the dictating terms, so I must bowl in a way I conduct the game, okay? So against Gavaskar, he, he was not too tall anyway. You see, there are certain lengths you bowl, by and large, which either he will reach out by stepping out or stretching out. A ball which bowled was, as uh, Suresh said, it was totally correct, a ball which Drifted a bit, but I had the ability to bring back the ball. Okay, now many bowlers they drift the ball and it goes towards the outside the lay, off stump or whatever it is. But I had the ability to take the ball away at will. Please note, at will, underline. Okay, <laughs> not a fluke. At will and bring the ball. So that was the ball which Sunny misread me and he reached out for me and well. And this is I got the wicket. If, because if I, the ability of bringing the ball is most important for a spinner. Everybody can take the ball away. But after pitching, to bring back the ball to the desired degree of turn speaks only volumes of capabilities. If I may just uh, uh, you know, interject a, a PS to that ball of the century. The first time I saw Prasanna bowl was not in that Ranji Trophy match. It was four years previously, 1970. There was a club match in YMCA, and my uncle Dore took me because it was City Cricketers. It was a YSR match. Uh, City Cricketers versus Indian Air Force. And Indian Air Force had a fantastic team, MR Jairam, DD D. Deshpande. And you, DD Deshpande was, of course, the great threat, you know, like Gavaskar in, in, in that team. And you pulled him two slightly short of the length balls. He put you, pulled you for four. Third over, you pulled him a straighter one, and you hit, caught him here, LBW. Ten years later, I met him in Delhi, and I said, sir, I saw you. He said, Pras made a fool of me that day. <laughs> <laughs> and generations you made a fool of, you know, in the, in the same way. So that, that is the kind of artistry, yeah. Uh, yeah. So just, uh, uh, yeah. Ram, you, you mentioned, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hello. Yeah. yeah, I just, just as a sort of a footnote to some of these uh, uh, great bowlers in action, Pras was talking about bowling in the nets to the Indian players, and obviously when he's doing that, He's well past his playing days. Uh, when when uh, one of the bowlers, one of the batters he kept bowling to in, in 80s was Azruddin. And Azruddin was just coming into the Indian team. No, he had 300s. Was it after the 300s? <laughs> Not coming, he was yeah. 300s. Yeah. So he already had 300s and he was, he was batting in the nets. And Pras kept getting his off stump. Pras kept getting his off stump. And one of the, one of the officials there, came and told Pras, he won't, he won't tell you the story, but, but I'll tell you. One of the officials came and told Pras, please stop bowling to the Indian batsmen. Their, their morale is going down, play watching him bowl. <laughs> yeah. No, I, this is just an observation, Ram. You mentioned about uh, Mr. Ganguly going back to Calcutta, yeah. uh, one of the inflection points of that match. And uh, I was in Calcutta in 74, 75, watching Clive Lloyd and uh, Pras uh, in that team of... Uh, so uh, there were, since we didn't have players from Bengal playing uh, in any of those matches, 
uh, it was always uh, Pras and Mansur Ali Khan Patawdi yes, yes, whom yes. we would support yeah. because they were the sons-in-law of the Bing uh, of Bengal. Yeah, Jamai Babu. And and and, and, and <laughs> Jamai Babu. Yeah. And and since then they were our heroes yeah. uh, in in Calcutta. And of course, after losing uh, Bangalore and Delhi, uh, Calcutta turned the match uh, for Clive Lloyd and uh, with yeah. Wish scoring 139 and Chandra wrapping up. And so that was that was a memorable match, and I always remember. Uh, pra Prasanna from those times and of course later on in KGA and other places yeah. where I've met. Yeah. But, uh, it, you know, and then we went on to win in Chennai, in, in Madras those days and of course Bombay proved to be a difficult. But that was the test series that post the, uh, the, the Ranji win, I right. guess, uh, right. that we played and it was, it was fabulous. And uh, Farooq Engineer was one of the, you know, uh, picking up uh, catches in Madras at that time. So this is just an observation, thank nothing, you, nothing, thank just you, thank you. Uh, Pras, before you come to the uh, next question, I want to ask you uh, uh, something about the, this series against West Indies. The Madras match, uh, there is a story, Venkat was 12th man. And it was the, th the, the fourth innings, and Venkat told uh, Tiger, put Pras on from that end, that will suit him more. Is that true? Because I think he said for, for process bowling, I think he made you change. He told Tiger, uh, I think I know the Chapok wicket so well, maybe you should change his ends. And then you got four wickets very quickly. No, I, I'm not too sure on that issue, but Chapak suited me. <laughs> Both ends I used to take with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because okay. I still remember yeah. Yeah. why I'm trying to tell you is this. Yeah. Against West Indies, I took nine wickets, I think. Correct? Yeah. So I had Clive Lloyd stumped bowling from the Perlin end. Uh, so I, what I'm saying is yeah. fact. And following day, second innings, I bowled from the other side, uh, bowled the third over of the day. Uh, I had Roy Fredericks caught back with short leg, bowled Prasanna uh, from the other side. Okay. So that's why I say both the, both the sides I used to yeah. take. Yeah. Yeah, you go ahead. Yeah. <coughs> Where's the mic? Uh, Mr. Prasanna, do you feel that you got a raw deal from the selectors. <laughs> Why? Because uh, I felt uh, sometimes Venkat Ragan was preferred to you more because of his batting than his bowling abilities. I felt, I used to feel that you were a better bowler than him, especially when you were at your height of uh, uh, achieving greater victories for India. Somehow I felt... Uh, yeah. okay. I, don't, uh, I don't see that uh, I was dropped or given a raw deal. You see, many people interpret in many ways, especially scribes. Sorry, it's great. <laughs> okay. Because you see, captain knows his job. Okay? Need of the play, a player for a particular situation is how he picks the side. Because, to be very honest, when I bowled, when that gentleman referred to the Calcutta test, when we came back into the series after having lost two tests against the West Indies side, I didn't take many wickets, or I didn't take wickets at all in Calcutta. It was, uh, I think Chandra took some four or five wickets, Chandra, Bishan, yeah. I think, yeah. Bishan, right? Yeah. Even though at that particular time, on paper, I didn't take wickets, okay? But on the while playing, captain realized my effectiveness because I could beat most of the batsmen in one end, but I was unlucky to pick any wickets. But there was a discussion that I should be dropped in Chennai. But uh, better sense prevailed upon uh, the captain. He picked me, I picked nine wickets when I think uh, Vishwanath got 97 out runs, I think. Right? Mm -hmm. So the question here is. Dropping and picking is basically depends on the captain. And I think in, uh, when we played in England, all four of us played in, uh, I think, Ed Basson Test. Yeah. And, uh, well, unfortunately, he, he expressed his uh, inability for Venkat to be utilized to that extent because I picked, I think, something like nine wickets, you know, some award and this and that. So. He was explaining to us many times that it is extremely difficult to have four, four spinners in the team because you, he, you don't know which one to operate when. Okay? 
is a lot more easier to bowl with three spinners because you expect one spinner to bowl badly. So the other two can be, you know, can be effective. But here, four bowlers, if two of them fail, you know, it's very, the whole side, the strength gets weakened. So it's very difficult. So win some, lose some is the rule of the day. But say, you got to accept it as cricketers. One gets dropped. Well, yes. I was dropped after taking uh, some six wickets or five wickets in Sydney Test under Bishan. I was telling them. That's it. I mean, you can't just uh, take it as a, oh my God, they won't let me down. No, it's a part of the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's a, my privilege to be a part of the audience today. I happen to be uh, one of the spectators in that uh, historic match in, against Bombay. And I, as, I'm, I'm, I'm as old as uh, Ramchandra Guha, 58 born and 16 years. Uh, then when I saw the match, I saw the ball of the century. But I, I mean, I think enough has been discussed on that match. I want to take a couple of other two things which Pras, Mr. Prasanna has been famous for. One is Gary Sobers had uh, kind of made a remark and ranked him as the world's best off spinner. Although he had uh, Harsha, uh, Mr. Gibbs, who was his own cousin, he was also equally good and world on the world stage. But Pras was given the title as the world's best off spinner. I think that was a fantastic tribute, which I'll always uh, cherish. The other part was uh, when Tony Lewis's uh, team came to England, they played a Chipak uh, match, and I, I traveled all the way to Madras to watch the match. And Ajit Wadeka was the captain, and before the match, they said no Venkat, no test was the banner. The, there was a lot of uh, placards and there was a lot of protest. But despite that, Mr. Venkat Raghavan was the 12th man and uh, person was in the team. And it so happened that uh, the England team was, I mean, uh, they were scoring well and Indian, the Indian team had a good total, but the, Indian, the England team was scoring well and they couldn't wait, get wickets after some time. And then uh, Wadek was lead, lead, leading the team. Unfortunately, or luck would have it. Can of, we have the question, please? Yeah. No, not a question, just a yeah. comment. Yeah. So, at that moment, Wadek hurt himself while fielding the slips. So, he walked off the field and gave the captaincy to Farooq Engineer. Next over, he tossed the ball to Prasanna. Four overs later, England outlawed three wickets down. So this is the, I mean, that was a turning point, which, because there's always a feeling that Wadeka didn't like Prasanna's, uh, this thing. I mean, with due respect, you know, I'm speaking very frankly. Well, let me uh, actually narrate what actually happened. This against the uh, England team, I think, uh, Mike Dennis team, I think. Tony Lewis. Tony Lewis, Tony Lewis yeah. Actually, what happened was that uh, it is a low-scoring match. I think second innings, I had to prove that I was also a good batsman, so I scored some 38 or 37 runs. <laughs> so there was a substantial lead of about 230 or 240 runs. By lunchtime, the England side were 83 for one. Okay, and then I had a small injury. I had put a plaster on that, and Bishan was calling me, come in, come in, you know, because Bishan was bowling, but nothing was happening. So I took the plaster out. I went, went on to the field. The umpire said, I can't bowl because I was been, I've been away for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it is. So I had to wait for two hours, two hours, two to three hours. Then there was a big... As I said, Chipak and Chennai has been my supporting uh, people. They started talking about shouting Prasanna, 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 whatever it is. So, whatever some reason or the other, he wouldn't allow me to bowl before lunch. So, anyway, because of the pressure, whatever it is, or, you know, the score was... So, he gave me the ball. Then he told me, Pakat ke bolo, you know, unfortunately, that is the, that's how the Bombay players play, really, Pakat ke, I asked him, what, kya Pakat ke, you know, <laughs> you know, I asked him in the same way, I'm telling you, it's a conversation like this, then I told, I used to call Vareka Jitya, I told him, Jitya, there's one and a half days to go, Pakat ke ke, by tomorrow lunch, we'll be having lunch together, you know, <laughs> there's no use, you leave to me, I'll see. We have to win. 
so he got wild. Then I told him, please stand in the short mid wicket and manage to catch if you can, right? <laughs> so with reluctance, he gave me the ball. I think the first ball I bowled Mike Dennis, I think. I yeah, know. He tried to drive the ball, he was bowled. And the next four overs, I got four wickets for 12 runs, two of which were caught by Wadaika, one Yekna Solka. And, you know, and then he says, I asked him, Kya pakadega? So anyway, <laughs> you are holding on to the trophy though. We won the match. So that's how it happened. Okay? So, uh, press the, the model of the story, uh, press, press the model of the story is, for India, Karnataka and Bombay have to perform together. <laughs> <laughs> like Abbas Karnataka. Or Dravid and Tendulkar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the lady there, the lady there. Yeah, yeah, go, yeah. yeah. You, the, you had a question? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Prasanna sir, it's an absolute honor. Uh, my question is, uh, if you had to choose one batsman in the Ranji circuit or in the domestic uh, circuit, Previndal, who you Previndal thought Previndal was past? Uh, no, in the past while you were playing, okay. if you had to handpick one batsman who you thought was the toughest to bowl to, who would that be and why? I picked Tom Graveney. In the Ranji side? second. Indian batsman. Oh, obviously, J.R. Vishwanath. Unfortunately, he played. We played together. That was the advantage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming, it's coming. It's coming. Uh, thank you very much, sir. It's a real privilege being here. Uh, my question to you is, you know, there's a lot of data analytics that is being done before the, before the match is being played. So my question to you is, as a captain, I think you are one of the cerebral captains that we had. How was your preparation before going into a match, like in playing against Mumbai or, or, uh, or against in the finals in the Ranji Trophy final? So the question was that uh, nowadays a lot of data has come into plan, planning the match. And you, uh, as a captain, how did you plan before the match your team strategy? When you didn't have all these data crunches to help you? Whatever data one might have, you must have a team to fit into that data. <laughs> so I had a team which I knew the strength of the individual players. I knew the team who plays well when. And I had one of the greatest bowlers with me to bowl with, Sachin Shekhar. So any time I knew he is going to turn the you know, table. So the question of planning is not there. I mean, it's all big uh, data and uh, you know, analysis and all those things are useless. Basically, it is useless because it is individual capability that counts. You know, you, today you may say how to play in swinger, but if you allow the ball to go between the bat and pad, what is the better idea of saying in swinger you play like that? No, there is no use. You got to you are, a captain should know the strength of the team. So I think these days the captains who lead. Possibly they don't know this thing, 13. It's okay, as you, simple you, as that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, maybe time for two more questions. One here and one then right at the back. Uh, then right at the back, one here. This gentleman, the uh, pink orange shirt, and then one right at the back. Uh, thank you. It was a pleasure listening to the panel. I have a question for Prasanna, sir. Uh, you bowled against some of the hardest hitters in cricket, which was the West Indies team and also the Australian team of those days. Today, we are being very dismally told that, oh no, off-spin is dead because of T20. How did you find a way to bowl? And to be very honest, I think it's just a matter of extent, not technique, that we have hard hitters today in cricket, in T20 and so on. How do we bring back the art of off-spin to life at a time when everyone is trying to hit sixes? See, our spin bowling is not a bowling which can be taught. You know, it has because a bowler has to intend something and has to execute the same thing. You can imitate a fast bowler, but a spin bowling is extremely difficult to imitate. Okay, today I might coach a youngster how to bowl, but he has to bowl. You know. Whereas you can ask a fast bowler to bowl and he can still bowl the same way. You know what I mean? Now everyone bowl, wants to bowl fast. You can see that a lot of youngsters are bowling so fast, right? That's the easiest way. So with the T20 coming into play, where 
You bowl only four hours. I'm uh, sorry, T20. Four hours. Four hours. Okay. In four hours, what you can do as a spinner? Yeah. I mean, let us be very honest. And if you concede runs, you can't play next match. It's another uh, uncertainty in this game. Okay. So, therefore, what has happened is the mindset of a spinner is not to take a wicket. It's a curtail rate of scoring, one. Two, he gets the wicket not because of his ability, it is the, it's the mistake of a batsman. Okay? But some bowler who takes two, three wickets with that sort of a, you know, with batsman's mistake, people are saying they are very good spinners. Okay? But only bowler who could possibly make an impact, only type of bowlers in a T20 game will be the leg spinner because the leg spinning art is such that the ball leaving the bat has a better chance of ball coming in because uh, the batsmen also now, they are throwing the bat because, see, T20 is not a cricket at all, basically. It's the it's a spectator's game. It's a spectator's game. Can you imagine if a T20, uh, no batsman scores a four or a six, uh, the spectators will be there? I don't think so, because they want sixes and four. The moment a batsman just, you know, keeps playing one run, two runs, I don't think he's going to play for the team at all. So, the basic idea is a more a spectator's game than a cricket game, okay? Therefore, it is very difficult for any spinner to survive in a shorter version of it. At the back, a last question maybe from the back. Yeah, thanks for a wonderful evening. I'll keep it very short. Uh, the 73-74 uh, Ranji winning team, how will they fare in the IPL of today? Uh, in the, how in will the, they fare in the IPL of today? In the, in the bidding as well as on the field. And now that we have an impact player, uh, which player in the particular team would have made a good impact player? I think we, are, we will have fared well. You know why? You, you are practicing with them only, you know, the, what, you, what teaches you in the nets is the approach to the game. So when you bowl to the players of the present era in the nets, and you also try to curtail them, so you learn the game while playing in the nets. So I think we had the ability to adopt ourselves, let me be very honest. I think we could have been also successful in shorter version of the game because maybe brain would have worked better. Uh, Shada and uh, Suresh, some last comments, quickly. Shada and then Suresh, yes. and then we conclude. Yeah. Then I'll just say something. Yeah, just, just, I don't know, sir, no, I don't know. Just very quickly, since we're talking about, you know, the great Karnataka players, bowlers, batting, but I think uh, Syed Kirmani is uh, sort of almost the last great Karnataka player I saw before the 90s guys came along. When I, I started watching him. And there was something so magical and mystical about his keeping. It's, he was so light on his feet. And I'm thinking about wicket keepers you see now, and you don't see them that light on their feet. Maybe it's the game's changed. And, uh, you know, the, and, uh, he would have been, had Dhoni not come along, I'm sure uh, Prasanna sir will argue, uh, that he would have been picked on any uh, Indian Test 11. He's still in my all time. Because he has to keep, he has to keep to uh, Pras Chandra Kumble. I mean, exactly, I don't, I don't exactly. want Dhoni to keep so, for them. So, I think, in exactly. So, I, yeah. you know, I, I think maybe I, I, I sort of remembered him also as being yeah. this extremely, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, a character and a superb keeper to spin bowling. So, just a couple of comments, maybe, sir, from you about what it was bowling That's with... Right. Uh, Great, yeah. Sahid Kirmani? Yeah. Kirmani, yeah. <coughs> First of all, I rate Kirmani as the best keeper that India has ever produced, simply because <laughs> to keep wickets to Chandra is the ultimate test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, let us be very honest, Chandra himself did not know what he was bowling. <laughs> And how do you expect the batsman to know what he's bowling? <laughs> and the man behind the stumps is Kirmani. Okay? But this man kept wickets to him. So obviously, he possibly could read Chandra's uncertainty before the batsman can read. So I still feel that's the most important thing. Why I raised Kirmani, I think he, if he were to play now, I think it would have been a... Uh, well, he would have been as good as or say he would have had the same age like Dhoni because uh, he was a pretty useful bat as well. Yeah. So anybody who can keep my scale, sorry to say, is, 
if someone can keep wickets for Chandra, not for Prasanna or uh, Bedi or whatever it is, because we are all orthodox, conventional style, maybe, you know. But anybody who can keep wickets for Chandra up to the stumps, because this has been told even to Alan Knott, and he has accepted, yes, it is difficult to keep. You know, you have to get, you have to keep on keeping wickets to Chandra. So, in English, on English too, we have discussed, I said, even if you keep on keeping wickets to Chandra, because Chandra does not know even then what he's bowling. So, that is uncertainty, which is a scale. And Kirmani did so well, and I still believe that we are all lucky. A Karnataka team was extremely lucky to have Kirmani as a keeper. To be very honest. Yeah, we, we started with 73-74. Uh, <coughs> Funnily enough, I remember 73, the, the Karnataka team started their nets as Mysore, and by the end of the season, they were Karnataka, because in between, the, the name had changed. Also, 74 was important, again, because that was when the first test was played in Bangalore uh, against West Indies in, in, uh, in November. So, it's, it's, it's a... Apart from what you were saying about the importance of uh, uh, opening the sort of door to the other, other teams, I think it is also, uh, I mean, post Bombay, I think it is also an important uh, uh, period for South Zone cricket itself. Because I think that was, that was the starting point of South Zone asserting itself. I mean, they had won, they had won the Dulip Trophy earlier, but as a, as a, as a uh, zone with five teams then, which could, any, any of which could have won the Ranji Trophy, I think that was, that was a, a, a very crucial period in, in South. Uh, it's just been an absolutely magical evening. I'm going to end with, I have many Pasana stories, but I'm going to end with one, uh, which I read about. Uh, it was 1996, uh, when the World Cup was being hosted in India. There was a match in Jaipur, and Shane Vaughan was, was playing, it was Australia against someone, and he was practicing bowling in the nets before the match, and Prasanna happened to be there. And he walked across the ground, uh, tapped Shane Vaughan on the shoulder, shook his hand and said, son, you have a great talent. I hope you keep on bowling for years to come. And Wally looked at Prasanna and he said, who is this man, this middle-aged man, unfit man who is giving me this compliment? What's happening? He was very puzzled. And Ian Chappell was, happened to be over here in the conversation. And he said, Shane, that is Arapali Prasanna, the greatest spin bowler of my generation. So I think that is, you know, I don't know, that's how I heard that. I mean, so it is, so it's been a real privilege. I think it's been one of the most uh, enjoyable, invigorating, memorable sessions held at the PIC. And I thank Sharda and uh, Suresh uh, uh, for being here and for contributing so richly to it. And thank you so much, Pras.